I wanted to tell you something, and maybe there's a lot of adults out there who are telling you this too, but you have really good ideas. And uh, to explain that, I wanted to tell you about a couple of really good ideas I had that seemed crazy at the time. And I'd like to start with a question. Are there, do you think that there are experiences you might be having as young adults, as children, that later in life would give you a tendency to take on impossible challenges, to be creators rather than consumers, to be makers? This is a small town where I grew up in Northern California. It's called Mendocino. And I grew up in the 1970s, which was quite a long time ago, when there was an experiment taking place in California, which is that the public schools started creating little schools inside the regular school where the teachers there would be allowed to teach in entirely radical new ways. And they thought, we'll start all these experiments and then we'll cherry pick the really good ideas and that'll go into the regular curriculum. Well, that was a great idea. Unfortunately, the law changed and all those schools disappeared over the course of about 12 months. But I was lucky. Oops. I was able to jump out of my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky. I went to one of these schools right when it started. And this school had the notion that if we just created a rich environment for kids and let them do follow their passion wherever they went, they would do great things. So I tried out being a photographer. I learned a little bit about electronics. And one thing that stuck with me my entire life, I started doodling in my notebooks. But when I discovered this machine, the Apple II, I found my true calling. I spent every hour of my life in the computer lab, learning how to program this machine. And by the time I turned 16, I was being paid to write code professionally. <clears throat> For the next 25 years, I wrote code and managed people who wrote code. You'd think that would be what somebody said they did for a living, but that all changed one night over dinner. I was having a conversation with some friends and I noticed that they weren't letting their kids do the kinds of things that we had done together as children when we were growing up. And I said, I should start a summer camp where you guys can drop your kids off and they can have the kinds of adventures we used to have and you won't even know about it. <laughs> By the end of the evening, I had five children signed up for my camp, which didn't exist at that point. So I opened a camp. And that very first year, never having been a teacher before, I decided that we would just make stuff. Everything that I had learned up to that point, I had learned while trying to make something that I wasn't really qualified for. And so I created a camp where kids would do the same. It was basically a laboratory where I could experiment on other people's children. <laughs> <coughs> as if that weren't enough qualification to be a, a, a teacher. <laughs> I am also incredibly indulgent of my own curiosity. I can take all day to empty a big bucket of water. I'm also really good at doodling now. I doodle everywhere I go. I doodle when I'm in a conference like this. These are my notes from TEDx, uh, from TED a few years ago. And I love this quote from Andrew Bird, and I think that's why I doodle, is it captures these moments for me. What the world needs now is reckless curiosity. I think that's true. I can also balance rocks, and I have balanced thousands and thousands of rocks. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> I can make perfectly round balls of sand. And as I discovered, I can teach that to kids. So that must make me qualified to run a summer camp. Why not? So as you might expect at our summer camp, we start with doodles. We have conversations and we, we make horrible sketches. Uh, most of them don't mean anything to, the, to anybody except for when you're sitting there having the conversation. This is an idea for a little go-kart that you power by rowing. 
and you steer with your feet, because why not? So we took that sketch and we pinned it up to the whiteboard in the studio, and this is what the kids built out of that. It's a row-powered cart. It's like a rowing machine in the gym, only you get to steer it around on the driveway. <coughs> this is uh, uh, when I'd started the school, uh, the summer camp, I was still working as a uh, manager of engineers and programmers. And I was in an incredibly boring meeting, and I started to have an idea about how you might make a boat out of plastic pipe and cover it with canvas. And I obsessed over this little detail in the lower left corner there where the canvas rolls over the side of the boat. And I thought, this is a brilliant idea. Of course, it had been invented like 800 years earlier, but I, I discovered it for myself in this meeting. And so I took this exact page and I taped it up on the wall at the next summer camp session. And the kids looked at it and they sort of chuckled. And then they sort of saw that it made sense. And then they started going. And they designed a new boat. And we took it out in the ocean. So that worked too. And we were starting to get the sense that the crazier the idea, the more interesting and engaging it would be. Here's a, a train powered by a sail. That worked pretty well. Here's a roller coaster with 120 feet of track. That was pretty fun. We only injured one adult. In <laughs> <laughs> Here was an idea that I thought was kind of interesting. These guys, uh, coincidentally, in the 1970s, the Wills brothers, had this kit you could order in the back of a newspaper uh, for, an, for an airplane that you could make out of bamboo and plastic sheeting and duct tape. And uh, there were two things I thought were really interesting about this picture. One is, these guys are experiencing a moment of pure, unadulterated joy. That looked like a good thing to do in the summer. And the second thing was, every detail about how this was constructed was visible in the picture. So we took that to camp, we taped it up to the wall, and boom. I can tell you that everybody who went to this camp six years ago and did this project remembers why the first three versions of the airplane didn't fly <laughs> in more detail than a college student remembers their first year of aerodynamic engineering class. <laughs> uh, locals uh, dumped a bunch of broken gardening equipment uh, along the road to my house, and uh, we picked that up and we salvaged the weed whacker motor, and we built a motorcycle out of it. And in fact, we called it the world's most dangerous motorcycle because <laughs> it was about as strong as a wet noodle. <clears throat> our very first sailboat that we built was ugly and slow, but our second and third boats were beautiful and fast. And that's what we find, is that if you allow yourself to make a series of mistakes when you're exploring a new idea, every iteration you do of it gets better and more interesting. So this idea about this camp garnered a little bit of fame. And in fact, the roller coaster video has been seen by some six or seven million people for that goofy little plywood roller coaster. And I got invited to share these ideas that we had been working on on some of the big stages around the world. And that was pretty fun. And as I did that, I bumped into other educators. And they started to ask me questions. And I started to not have ideas. And then something funny happened. Tinkering school students went out in the world. And they were doing incredible things in college and in their first careers. And my notebook started to fill up with new doodles. And these would be about how a school would work. So a couple of iterations later, I had an idea. And it was so compelling, I thought we better try it, or we would be, uh, we would be doing a disservice to our ideas. So I rented 9,000 square feet of a mayonnaise factory. <laughs> and the school itself was the first project we worked on together, the students, the teachers, and all of our friends pitching in. And today, our school is a kind of whimsical, crazy, Peter Pan, Never Never Land kind of environment, because it's built by and with children as part of the school. We learn everything in the context of doing something. So the math and the science that we study comes out of the projects that we do. And today, 35 students attend this school. It's a K through 9 school right now. We'll be K through 12 pretty soon. So I would say, let's be brave with our own ideas. You should trust them. <laughs> you should trust them.
they're worth pursuing. And even if your first version of that idea doesn't work, you should keep going. Because the world needs makers, people who make and don't just watch. Thank you very much.